ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونؤمن به ونتوكل عليه ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلله فلا هادي له ونشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له له الملك وله الحمد يحيي ويميت وهو على كل شيء قدير ونشهد ان محمدا بشيرا ونذيرا وعبده ورسوله اللهم صل على محمد امام المتقين وسيد المرسلين وعلى اله وصحبه ومن تبعهم باحسان الى يوم الدين اما بعد قال الله سبحانه وتعالى بالقران المجيد اعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم ولقد خلقنا الانسان ونعلم ما توسوس به نفسه ونحن اقرب اليه من حبل الوريد اذ يتلقى المتلقيان عن اليمين وعن الشمال قيد اذ يتلقى المتلقيان عن اليمين وعن الشمال قيد ما يلفظ من قول الا لديه رقيب عتيد وجاءت سكره الموت بالحق ذلك ما كنت منه تعهيد ونفق في السور ذلك يوم الوعيد وجاءت كل نفس ما سائق وشهيد لقد كنت في غفله من هذا لقد كنت في غفله من هذا فكشفنا عنك غطاءك فبصرك فبصرك اليوم حديد صدق الله صدق الله العلي العظيم Dear brothers and sisters alhamdulillah we are living today and may allah prolong our life so that we reap the benefits from the guidance of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to earn more ajr more thawab and may allah help us refrain from the sins we may commit in future now today is the 23rd of february and uh, 7th of jamaat ul thani so we shall be talking about individual life record with relation to the resurrection every human whether muslim jew christian or all other non muslims everybody will be resurrected on the day of resurrection those who recognize one god and those who did not recognize the oneness of god both who will be segregated in different groups and the one who have recognized one god and they accepted muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam the last messenger prophet and the prophet before him such are the people who came last but they will be in front on the day of resurrection the people those who betrayed god and they worship someone else they will be flagged on that day the flag of betrayal and they will be recognized on that day wa wujuhi yawma izin alayhum ghabara their faces will be saddened as if the dirt is there the pain is there but the people those who recognize one god wujuhi yawma izin musfara dahikatu mustabshira their faces will be growing and they will be very happy prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam mentions on the day of resurrection my nation will be radiant because they will have their forehead shining because of the sujood and they will be having glowing face 
because of the wadhu they do at least five times a day in another word if i want to use the biblical sentence we baptize ourselves every day five times not once in a life and that is how the muslim community will be growing on that day jami tirmidhi similarly those who betrayed allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the oneness of god and they did not worship one god they will have their penalty consequences on that day narrated abdullah ibn umar radiyallahu ta'ala anhu that the prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam said for every betrayer there will be a flag by which he will be recognized on the day of resurrection rawa al bukhari as far as jews christians and sabians are concerned allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had given them the divine books and the accountability of those people will be based upon the text the commands of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in that book for such segments of the community so quran is a witness and the quran says in surah al-baqara verse number 62 indeed those who believed and those who were jews or christians or sabians those among them who believed in allah and the last day and did righteousness will have their reward with their lord and no fear will there be concerning them nor will they grieve this verse itself requires a lot of explanation i am not touching that explanation today because our topic is a little bit different every human would be accounted and anyone among the muslims whether among the humans whether muslims jews christians and others if anyone worship other than the physically unseen one god if they worship physically unseen one god would not be forgiven on the day of resurrection so who say ever worships a physically seen god in here in this world or gods or goddesses there is a good advice to all of them that everyone must repent and reform before death we are human beings we care such humans we want them to go to jannah like we would like to go to jannah because we are all the children of adam and eve peace be upon them how a person will be identified on the day of resurrection allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given a very clear information but before that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doesn't need any reason to identify them because he knows the past he knows the present he knows the future but in order to establish a witness among the billions and billions of people who will be gathered on the day of resurrection some witness has to be there in order to establish a witness qala allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bil quran al majid a'udhu billahi minash shaitan ir rajim bismillah ar rahman ir rahim لا اقسم بيوم القيامه ولا اقسم بالنفس اللوامه ايحسب الانسان ان لن نجمع عظاما بلا قادرين على ان نسوي بنانا بل يريد الانسان ليجرى امامه المايتي الله سبحانه وتعالى the creator of this universe creator of me and you creator of muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam and whole of human kind till the day of judgment says in the quran i swear by the day of resurrection and i swear by the reproaching righteous soul 
to the certainty of resurrection day. Does human think that Allah will not assemble their bones to give the original shape? Yes, Allah is able even to proportion the fingertips of every human beings for identification. But the human desires to participate and compete in wickedness in the love of this world. Dear brothers and sisters, this verse indicates many, many things. And this verse indicates how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will resurrect us the way we are in this world today. Humans are embedded with an argumentation nature. <coughs> Allah knows all of us individually. And would all of us be there and will be recognized individually? We would all be gathered there in billions or more. Who knows how many people have died so far. But in order to establish a witness, a witness of identification, whole human, how he existed, existed or she existed in the world would be assembled with the bone and physical features all intact. Even the fingertips would be the same in order to present humans with true identity. <coughs> Non-believers argue re regarding the resurrection of human beings on that day. And they also say, Aida mithna turaban dalika rajum ba'id. We will be all the dust and how it is possible that we'll be resurrected on the day of the full. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala creates from nothing, from sifr. For Allah, it is easy to recreate again. Almighty Allah answers that he can not only assemble our bones, but can also reconstruct perfectly our every original finger tips. Though fingerprints have been invented in modern times, but knowledge in tissues, bone and bone marrow could be used for ID too. We got the information 1400 and so many years back. But it was 1880 when the fingerprints became the humanly scientific method of identification after research done by Francis Gold, a scientist. No two person would be the same. No two person could be the same. They cannot have the same fingerprints. This is the idea of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on the day of resurrection. Not to forget the iris inside, the blood tissues, the DNA, the chromosomes, the genes. There are a lot of things if we want to count. But what we know, scientifically, we have more chances to recognize that. And that is the best way of dawah to those who seek knowledge. And because of the, these fingerprints worldwide, Interpol, Immigration, the security agencies, they all use this technology which was mentioned in the Quran, invented by this guy for the benefit of security and peace all over the world. It was narrated by Abu Huraira radiallahu ta'ala anhu that the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, there is no part of human that will not disintegrate apart from a single bone at the base of tail, the tailbone, we call it coccyx, from which every human will be recreated on the day of resurrection. Scientists try to take the tailbone of human beings 
they try to turn into acid, they try to use the AC to dissolve it. And then at the end, they took one cell out and tried to incubate and produce the same cell in regenerative. Scientists have failed to destroy that caucus in the humankind. And that is the tailbone from which the human will germinate on the day of resurrection. This is very easy for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Akbarna Abdullah Qala Qala Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Awwalu ma yuhasabu bihi al-abdu Abdu eh as-salah للمؤمنين وأول ما يقضى بين الناس في الدماء the accountability of murder the first thing concern about a person will be brought to account will be his performance of salat on day to day basis and the first thing concerning which its course will be settled among the people will be bloodshed. Why people was, uh, were killed? Who killed it? Why killed it? How killed it? وَإِذَا الْمَعُودَةُ سُؤَلَتْ بِأَيِّ زَمْبٍ قُتِلَتْ People used to bury the, their young daughters. Their question will be on the day of resurrection, oh Allah, why we were killed. You see how clear, like mirror, are the things mentioned in the Quran. قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم بيوم الحج الأكبر فإن دماءكم وأموالكم وأرادكم بينكم حرام من <laughs> في بلادكم هذه أبدا ولكن ستكون له طاعة فيما تحتقرون من أعمالكم فسيرضى به means the prophet Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم when he did the hajj was Hajjul Akbar. He gave a message to the whole of Muslim kind. Indeed, your blood, your wealth, your honor is sacred to each other. Just as this day of yours is sacred in this city of yours. Indeed, no one commits a crime except against himself. Indeed, none commits a crime for which his son is accountable, nor does a child commit a crime for which his father is held accountable. <coughs> Satan, Shaitan, has lost hope of ever being worshipped in this city of yours, Makkatul Mukarrama. But he will have compliance in what these of yours you consider insignificant which he will be content with. Rawa At-Tirmidhi Narrated Ibn Abu Mulaika that Ummul Mu'mineen Aisha Siddiqa radiallahu ta'ala anha communicated to us that once the Prophet said whoever will be called to account about his deeds on the day of resurrection will surely be punished <coughs> will surely be punished Aisha Siddiqa radiallahu ta'ala and said Ya Rasulullah doesn't Allah say he surely will receive an easy reckoning 
the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam mentioned. This means only the presentation of the accounts, because on the day of resurrection the accounts will be presented, and the Quran says the one who will have or who will be receiving from the right hand. They will have their accountability the easiest, very easy. They will have good news. But the one who would have from the left hand, that is where the accountability will come. So the Prophet said, whoever will be disputed about his account will certainly be ruined. Rawa <coughs> al-Bukhari. How we, how we comply ourselves to be resurrected on the day when our faces will be glowing, <coughs> will not be having any how fear, we will not have any huzn, saddening. Anas bin Malik radiallahu ta'ala mentions that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa said, if a young man honors an older person on account of his age, Allah appoints someone to show reverence to him in his old age. It's not talking about the parents only. About any old person, <coughs> if we see and we are sympathetic to him and supportive of him, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will support us in the life where we are old. And about the ajr, the hadith doesn't mention but in other places. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves those, those who are muhsineen. So, we get double reward for that. Similarly, the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam mentioned, he who calls others to follow the right guidance will have a reward equal to the reward of those who follow him without their reward being diminished in any respect on that account. Hadith Tirmidhi. قال شداد بن أوسن قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم The wise man is the one who takes account of himself and strives for that which is after death and the helpless man or miserable man is the one who follows his own whims then indulges in wishing thinking about Allah, in wishful thinking about Allah. Means the person is not doing good intentionally in this world, but he has the intention of reaping the fruits only from this world. And then by the end of the time, he says, Oh Allah, forgive me. Oh Allah, do this to me. Oh Allah, do this to me. Certainly Allah forgives. But when the mistakes are repeated again and again, and just only for the sake of seeking forgiveness, a person does. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not pleased with that person. When we commit a sin, we regret and we keep <coughs> repenting. There is no doubt Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgives our sin altogether. But that forgiveness should be before we see angel of death coming. <laughs>